Between October and January, uh, we had visited China for the second time, so we think it's a really great destination to go to. It's a country that's full of diversity and lots of interesting things to visit and see. Um, most people might be tempted just to go to Beijing, which is the main city to go to, the main place, or Shanghai, because it's famous for its diversity and influence from the West. But we visited a whole range of different places and found that there's so much more, so much more to see. So although Beijing does make it onto our list, um, we're also going to tell you about some of the other places that we went to that we really, really enjoyed being in. So uh, first of all, we will start with Beijing. Beijing is really cool because it's this massive, sprawling capital city. There's loads of stuff going on. There's loads of cultural and historical place to visit. Um, there's the Forbidden City, the Summer Palaces, the Pagodas, the Parks. Um, you really liked Mao's Mausoleum, mm -hmm. so go and visit. Um, there's markets. It's just it's a really, really fun place to be, and I think it gives you that kind of first taste of China. Yeah, it's a good entry point into everything that's China. And also, Beijing's a really good hub point for going uh, into the rest of China. It's really well connected. Yeah. Right, next up is Xi'an. Um, Xi'an is obviously known for the Terracotta Warriors, the Terracotta Army. But again, it's more than just the one thing. We have the amazing old city wall that goes around the city. There's kind of the new city and the old city, and the new city surrounds the old city, and the old city has this big, massive, long wall, uh, and inside it's got all the historical places, which are really interesting. Um, so it's got the, uh, the Muslim quarter, which is really good for a uh, diverse range of food. Just walking around. Yeah, just walking around is really beautiful. And also, one thing that we really liked doing was riding uh, bikes around the old city wall, which took a really long time. But it was, a, it was a really nice day and you got on one side to see the new, the, the big tower blocks and then on the inside you got to see the kind of the old, the small, the um, lots of uh, small shrines and temples and stuff like that. So that's really nice. And then also surrounding Xi'an, uh, lots of really good walks and hikes. Uh, we went to Tuihua Mountain, which was probably one of our favourite first places to visit. Um, the next place that we really, really enjoyed, and I think it's kind of in the top couple of cities for both of us, is Chengdu. Chengdu is famous for the pandas, which are super cute, and if you get a chance, do go and visit. But there's so much more to it. Um, what we really liked was kind of the relaxed vibe of Chengdu, and it's known to be uh, China's happiest city. Um, and I can really see why, because the pace of life, although it's massive, the pace of life is a lot more relaxed so, uh, than to yeah, to um, which is really nice and also there's a massive culture of drinking tea in the park and playing games and um, as a tea lover that is something that I really appreciated about Chengdu and then nearby as well there's the Big Lashan Buddha which was really exciting to visit um, and there are some other places as well outside of the city. MA yeah, Emei Mountain, one of the four um, holy Buddhist mountains in China, which we didn't get to go to this time, but uh, it's on the list for when we return. Next up is Kunming in Yunnan, so right in the southwest, um, which is very different to the rest of China. Well, Backpacker vibe to it, there's more kind of tr people traveling around that area. Um, but it, is, it feels a lot more kind of Southeast Asian than China. Yeah. Speaking of China. Yeah. It's Chinese, <laughs> it's Chinese New Year and you can hear all the firecrackers in the background, even though at the moment we're in Cambodia. It's kind of easy to see the Southeast Asian influence in uh, Kunming and Yunnan province generally. The food is quite different. Um, there's lots of herbs being used that we've not seen anywhere else in China. Um, there was Burmese style tofu there, um, yeah so it was really really different, it had a really nice vibe, it's kind of very tropical and lush, um, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Um, and the city itself is really lovely and bright and nice to get around. The last place we're going to mention is Guilin, and although we didn't actually stay inside Guilin, we were, we were staying in a small town called Xingping, which is very close by. Guilin is the main city, uh, which has amazing, amazing, famous scenery and mountains. Um, if you look at the back of um, a 20 yuan note, 
you will see a picture of these amazing mountains and that's um, in Jinping town, very near to Guilin. Um, it's a big main hub, there's loads of things to see and the scenery is just gorgeous. Yeah, there's also Yangchuo nearby. So people go to yeah that's one of the yeah the kind of other top places yeah. to go it's a bit more busy it's a bit more touristy than Xinping um, but any of those three popular. I'm sure yeah it's just really it's really worth the visit because um, it is so beautiful and there's also places that we just haven't mentioned uh, first of all because the list could go on for such a long time we've been to loads of places um, but also because uh, they might not be main cities um, and I think our main advice is if you're planning a trip to China is find a couple of main cities you're interested and then look what's around them cool. um, and there'll be there'll be loads and loads of places to see around the cities nearby smaller places uh, go explore and have fun there yeah so there are there are kind of top five uh, but there could easily be so many more because it's really hard to pick thanks for watching thank you